Hi everyone, this is Stephanie Thomas. I'm Mary Thomas of Thomas Thomas and Thomas PC, also known as the Sales Sack Sisters. And we are going to talk about maintaining internal controls today, which is a very, very, very important topic. And what we're noticing, and I am part of a couple of different groups, accounting groups, where people talk about what's going on with their practices. And so this is going to be kind of a broad brush, but we're going to pull it in to sales tax first. There are times when you get a new employee, you get new software, uh, you just get to a point where you promote someone so that they're not doing the sales tax function anymore. And there can be a tendency, for, especially for people who have had really great audit results, they've never owed any money, everything's been clean. There is a tendency sometimes for people to change what they have done in the past and upgrade. Upgrade meaning that they are going to make their lives simpler by taking away some of the controls, by taking away some of the work that's associated with their current accounting system. I cannot tell you how many people have gone from a zero audit result to a six-figure audit deficiency because they have obliterated their controls. And the thing about it is it doesn't, in certain, in certain instances, it's not that they owe all that money. It's just that a case of their controls and their documentation is so bad that you have to prove that you don't owe all that money which in turn means that you're paying someone or you're devoting employee time to proving that you don't owe the money that an auditor has assessed because they're not able to trust the documents um, and the records that you, that you have because you have, have dismantled a lot of your internal controls and your checks. And when we say, when we say internal controls and checks, here, here's a very easy way to get this. Do you have invoice numbers that are unique identifiers? Are they sequential? You know, do you have, do you, are you running reports every month that show how you came up with what you reported to the taxing authority? If somebody walks in and says for invoice so-and-so, we would like to know what you sold specifically. What did you sell? Does your invoice describe what you sold, or, or is it just a number on there? Mm -hmm. You have to be able to go back to a source document, and it's getting really scary how many people don't actually have source, source documents. documents. You want to have a situation where there's a department, or there are a couple of people up in there. I never say one person because you never know what's going to happen. Somebody could decide to leave and then you'd be out in the sticks with, with you know, not knowing what's going on. So you want to have a couple of people that understand what's going on. You want to be, you want to know how much money did you collect? What did you collect it on? You don't want, you don't want 20 people issuing invoices and they can do it. Anytime, any way, you know, there's no contract. You see this all the time. There's no contract. Yeah. There's no invoice. Yeah. There's no purchase order. How does anybody know what you sold? Yeah. The presumption is that what you are doing, if you are selling a product and some services, the presumption is, is taxable until you prove otherwise. And your documentation is the proof. So if you've gotten rid of your invoices or your invoices are not sequential or you don't have any unique identifier, that makes things a lot more difficult to disprove or prove. And there's this nightmare that's going on where people can go in and Archer can go in and look at your bank account and tax everything that's in there. Yeah, picture it. Tax all your deposits into the bank account and you have to disprove that. And... Sometimes that's not the easiest thing to disprove. You always want to have your records. There are some people that think it's not important. If you don't have your records, you're going to pay for not having your records. Exactly. So when it's time to clean out at the when it's time to clean out the at the end of the year, if Joni wants to throw out something that's eight years old, 
Yeah, she can have that. But if she wants to throw out something that's two years old, uh-uh. Her answer's no. Uh-uh. It should be no. It should be no. Uh-huh. John would be gone. Yeah, it should be no. <laughs> it's it like, be no. no. But it's all about making sure that you maintain the appropriate documents. You maintain the appropriate controls. That it's that if someone decides to leave your business, you it's it's okay because everything is clear. It's not in their head. It, you have the actual trail and documentation that you need in order to prove or disprove the taxability treatment. So that if so that if you say I made two million dollars worth of sales in June. If an order comes in and they want to say, well, $2 million of this is taxable, we're taxing the whole thing. You can come in and you can say, oh, no, no, no. These are, these are the two, these are all the sales that add up to that $2 million. And these are the sales that are exempt because I got a certificate and here are my certificates. You see what's going on with that? You're starting out with the universe of $2 million, And then because you have your documentation, you can, you can pigeonhole what invoices, what transactions compose that two million? Mm-hmm. And then you just chip and charge. You're like, okay, my total sales was two million. My taxable sales was one million. Exactly. And then you and then you show the difference between the two million and the one million by saying, hey, these are my exemption certificates, these are my resale certificates, or I sell some things that are taxable, some things that are not. My invoice is showing that what I sold on this day was not taxable. You just need to be able to tie back to the numbers that you reported on your sales and use tax returns and have it very clear, a very clear trail. You want to connect all the dots for the order. You do not want them to assume anything. And honestly, you don't want to try to reconstruct things three years out, four years out. It just makes life a whole lot easier for everyone if you keep a clear trail every time you file your return, whether that's monthly, quarterly, or yearly. And no one can tell you exactly how to run your business. That's completely up to you. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that not only can the taxing authority follow what happened, but that you, you know what happened. what happened. So that you'll know, wait a minute, I should have... You know, I should have $2 million here. I only have $1.725 million. What happened, what happened to my money? Yeah. So you should want to, you, you need that control. That's what, we, that's what we mean when we say controls. You want to be able to reconcile back to what actually happened. Mm-hmm. And you want to be able to prove to anybody that asks, anybody that has the right to ask what happened, what actually happened. So... That is our thing about internal controls. It's about balance. That's all it is. You can do it any number of ways. I've seen so many different ways to to account for the same transactions that come up to the right result. Nobody can tell you exactly. You You get to pick. One thing I do suggest to people is that if this is striking fear in your heart, have an interim review. Seriously. Have an interim review. It's always best, I think, to identify areas um, of non-compliance or where something is a little weird before you get a notice that you're going to be audited. Yeah, it just it just makes things a whole lot less stressful that way. Yeah, because it'll give you a chance to not only identify those areas of non-compliance or where your documentation isn't exactly spot on, but you won't have the stress of dealing with an audit at the same time. And the thing about it is when I say in interim reviews, there are different kinds of interim reviews. If you are concerned about your sales tax compliance, then there are sales tax professionals that that can do an interim review. Mm-hmm. If you're just concerned about your systems just in general, talk to your accounting staff. Talk to your CPA. Mm-hmm. Have them come in. Have them do a review. Uh, and, and they'll tell you, hey, I don't think this is a good idea. Or maybe you need to shore this up. And you will have an idea of exactly what's going on. What is that saying? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah. This is one of those situations. So we hope that we helped you. This should not be scared. Just remember, accounting is like a puzzle. All the pieces 
should be fitting together. And if they're not all fitting together and it's not easy, then there's an issue there. And you just need to address it. And you, you do it like you would consume an elephant, one bite at a time. It's the Net Geo week. That's, that's where she got that from. Yeah, but I don't look at the big cats. No. But everybody, we hope that this helped you. We thank you for looking at the video. For everybody who subscribed, we truly do thank you for it. And if you like it, please give us a thumb up and subscribe. If there's a topic that is bothering you, if there's something you don't understand, drop us a line because you will see it. Yeah. So thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.